Welcome. Today we're going to talk about daily notes in Obsidian. We're going to talk about specifically how I use it. Um, just that gives you some ideas about what you may use it for as well. Before we do that, there's a few things you can do to support the channel. Number one is take one of my courses. You'll find the link to all those below. You might be interested in the Getting Started with Zettelcasting course or watch my upcoming course on Getting Started with Obsidian because it's pretty much ready to start recording now. It should be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, one of the things is you can like, subscribe, all that other YouTube stuff. Smash the like button. But let's talk about daily notes in Obsidian. So this is my daily note. This is where I start things. This is what I do. Uh, usually, so I'm going to just kind of fake this because I don't want my work meeting notes to show up here. Um, but what we would do is if I had a meeting today at 10 o'clock, I would have this with any notes to talk about so that I had that information for my meetings so that I could, you know, in the future come up with you. You can see there's dots over here for like 16. So actually I already have meeting notes for my next Monday. I have meeting notes for the 30th already that I need to follow up on, uh, probably even like that Wednesday. There's things in the future that I already know I want to talk about at some point in the future. And so I've logged them for the future. I find this really useful when it's time to talk to uh, my boss with my one-on-one -on, -one on Mondays. And there's sometimes there's something on like a Tuesday that's got me really annoyed. And I put it in on Monday. When I come to Monday, I'm like, nah, it's not that big a deal, actually. So I just don't worry about it. So just don't worry about it. So this is how I would come in and start a day. Uh, and I'd have a time log here. But what I really do is I would actually blank this all out like that. And then I'd use day planner. And I'd add a day planner template for today to the current note like that. And then I would start. So I have 0600 stream. Uh, and my next thing is 08 breakfast is what I'm going to have. I know that I'm going to have um, lunch. And then I'm going to be done by what, 15. And is a key is a keyword for it. I know there's times in here, so let's pretend this 10, uh, 10 o'clock meeting actually happens. So I go 10 meeting, and then I would actually transfer any notes talk about. And in fact, day planner lets you do headings too, so I could actually still have my hundred meeting heading there. That's kind of how my day would look. I'd actually pull out my uh, things three. And I'd look at it and I actually would usually drag this off to a second screen I have so that I can actually see them both. I know I need to uh, add Tom to the web password sheet so he can print it and delete it. So that might be something I do at, right? Oh, Tom. Because we are now using one password, but we haven't always, so predating me. I need to do Friday wrap up and my Marquento Friday wrap up, which is, you know, for my company that I work for. So I might schedule that for 1800 Friday wrap up. Uh, and then I do Mark and um, wrap up. Just letting them both time blocked on my schedule. I should have a course uh, or I've a book on time blocking as well. So you can check that out as well from my site. I've written about that a few times. I love time blocking. Uh, and I'd look through and I need to check with Katrina about help tags and get a bug herd receipt. So I might even do that kind of in my nine o'clock time slot, nine to 10. So bug herd receipt, Katrina, three tags. And then I have my day kind of planned out. You can see it over here in the day planner, right? I can see that I'm streaming, I'm doing breakfast, I'm getting Tom the web password sheet. I have a fake meeting at 10 o'clock, which doesn't actually exist clearly. I have lunch. And then I have the Friday wrap up time. I give myself, it says two hours here, but I probably would give myself, um, probably need about half an hour for that. So that might even get pushed back to later in the day, more like um, 1430 would be more likely. And then in theory, I've got this huge long lunch block, which doesn't really happen. So I might even go in here and say 1400 and just 
question mark. I don't know what I'm going to use that exactly for yet. Use that to check on uh, any emergency tasks at work or something like that, just to make sure that my weekend is wrapped up well. And then I can delete this fake 10 o'clock meeting because I don't need it. So next up, if I have a meeting and I have meeting notes, I will just take them kind of inside the meeting here. So any notes, action items and action item would usually get a task kind of indication with this checkbox. Uh, so this would be my action item. And then I would actually move that off to things three or to Reich, depending on where the best um, place that is. I find Reich isn't great at reminding of things to do things on a certain day. Necessarily, the scheduling features are all around project management. So they'll like adjust other people's dates and other people's features. And I don't want to do that. So um, sometimes they'll go into things three, sometimes they'll go out into right, just depending on what it makes the most sense to where it makes the most sense to put them. That's really it. That's how I use daily notes in Obsidian with the day planner plugin as I try to catch a mosquito that goes by. Did I catch it? Oh, I did, but it got away too. So that's really how I use it. Um, every day, all the time, I use the daily note kind of as a daily running log. So I will also use it in the middle um, of a day. So if I had like a task, a right task for this, and I was doing it at say nine, I'll adjust this later, 0915, work on right task. And then I would in fact even put in a link to task here. Just so I have a kind of a running look at what I'm doing through the day all the time. And I can go back uh, to fill in my timesheets later in the day, just so that I have them around. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you'd love to subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know what happened. Um, but honestly, keep your notifications off because you probably should. You got other things to do. Uh, other ways to support the channel, take one of my courses on Skillshare. You can go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare, become a member. I get some money for that. And then you can actually still hide direct links to my courses below. You're probably most interested in the one on Zettelcast, getting started with Zettelcast. That's it. Have a good day. Try to behave yourself.